Welcome back. Well, starting today, Adidas is once again selling Yeezy sneakers. Before we talk about anything, we gotta go over my botting setup and around how much it's gonna cost. If you've ever tried to purchase one of these sought out sneakers, you're likely aware that it's much more challenging than it initially seems. The rise of sneakerhead culture, which originated in the late 1980s, reached its pinnacle with the emergence of sneakerhead resale culture in the early 2010s. This phenomenon has led to intense competition among people vying for limited edition sneakers. Indeed, today we witness people engaging in heated battles over sneakers. The frenzy surrounding a particular shoe has caused shoe shoppers to spend around $180 per pair. The overwhelming demand resulted in website crashes, including popular platforms like Finish Line and other major sites. By mid-afternoon, hundreds of these coveted sneakers had already appeared for sale on eBay. In light of the high demand and potential profit, many individuals participate in sneaker reselling. They acquire sneakers with the intention of reselling them at a higher price. Some are even willing to pay up to $1,000 per pair. The global sneaker industry experienced remarkable growth in 2022, reaching a valuation of nearly $86 billion. Projections indicate that by 2030, the market would have expanded to a staggering $128 billion. The sneaker resale market is also thriving, with estimates suggesting that it will reach $30 billion by 2030. To compound the difficulty of acquiring these valuable sneakers upon release, a practice called sneaker botting has gained traction alongside the sneaker craze. Sneaker botting involves using automated software that streamlines the checkout process. These bots swiftly navigate websites, automating tasks such as filling in credit card and billing information, enabling users to complete the checkout process as swiftly as possible. As a result, it has become increasingly challenging for many individuals to secure highly coveted sneakers before they sell out. The rise of sneaker bots can be traced back to 2012, when Nike introduced its Air Jordan Dornbecker 9 shoes on Twitter. This release required users to directly message Nike for a chance to reserve the shoes. In response, bots were developed to automatically DM Nike when specific words like RSVP Now and Doinbecker were detected. These bots could react faster than human users, giving them a competitive advantage. Sneaker enthusiasts often find themselves frustrated with the prevalence of bots. They now have to constantly compete with these automated programs during special releases and collaborations. This diminishes the fun and enjoyment of the hobby for many individuals who see sneaker collecting as a personal passion. However, for some, it presents a lucrative business opportunity. In 2022, some individuals reported gross profits of $131,000 with botting expenses totaling around $15,000 and still earning six figures annually. There are two types of bots on the internet, good bots and bad bots. Good bots play a beneficial role by crawling the web, updating search engines, and contributing to platforms like Wikipedia. They provide valuable services that benefit all users. On the other hand, bad bots, which can be considered parasites of the internet, have a different purpose. These malicious bots infiltrate web shots with the intention of purchasing large quantities of goods before genuine customers can, with the aim of reselling them on the secondary market. Scalper bots primarily target high-value, high-demand items, especially those with limited availability. Jesper Essendrop, CEO of Qit, an IT company specializing in controlling internet traffic with virtual waiting rooms, has first-hand experience of combating bots while working with a prominent sneaker brand. He observed that between 40 to 95% of the traffic directed to web shops during the major sales events for popular goods such as sneakers were generated by bots. Once sneakers are acquired through botting, they're often resold on third-party platforms like StockX, Goat, and Flight Club. Exclusive drops of limited edition sneakers can now result in significant profits for resellers. For example, Nike's Air Force One Low Off-White Brooklyn Shoe, originally priced at $160, commanded an average price premium of 912% on StockX. The actions of these resellers artificially inflates prices, making the products unaffordable and subjecting buyers to exorbitant costs. This practice of buying excessive quantities of products and manipulating prices is often seen as exploitative and detrimental to genuine consumers. In October, the market experienced an impact when Adidas terminated its partnership with the rapper formerly known as Kanye West, now known as Ye, due to anti-Semitic remarks made by him. This development has left over $1 billion worth of Yeezy shoe lines in a state of uncertainty. Additionally, the overall decrease in consumer spending has contributed to a slowdown in the resale market, as highlighted by Cohen Research Equities report to CNBC. 
However, major brands like Adidas, Nike, and New Balance continue to face persistent challenges from bots. To illustrate the scale of the bot problem, let's consider a specific sneaker sale from last year. During this event, our website received a total of 1.7 million visitors. Shockingly, only 100,000 of those visitors were verified as actual human beings, while the majority were identified as bots. Nike's sneaker app, in particular, has faced criticism for its handling of bots. Loyal customers have voiced their frustration about having to compete with bots in every release. According to Nike, the sneaker app encounters an average of 12 billion bot calls or entries attempting to manipulate the system each month. The entry process for a draw on the Nike sneaker app involves customers selecting a shoe and size to submit their entry. Nike then randomly selects participants to purchase the shoe. However, it has been revealed that some of the participants in these draws are actually bots. To provide further context, let's examine the release of Nike's Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Reverse Mocha Shoe in 2022. This release attracted nearly 3.8 billion entries, but almost half of those entries, approximately 1.9 million, were identified as bots. These examples highlight the pervasive presence of bots and the challenges they pose on the sneaker market, leading to concerns about the fairness and genuine customer access to limited edition releases. Since then, Nike has made efforts to address the issue. In 2022, the company introduced updated terms and conditions specifically targeting bots. These new terms prohibit the purchase of products for resale, and Nike has stated that it reserves the right to cancel orders, refuse returns, impose restock fees, or even close the accounts of individuals suspected of botting. However, these terms currently only apply to customers based in the United States. Nike has not provided any comments on why the terms do not extend internationally or if there are plans for expansion. Despite these measures, botting remains a significant problem in the global market. Many genuine sneaker enthusiasts simply want to acquire a single pair in their size for personal use, but bots frequently snatch up large quantities of sneakers, leading to an overflow of stock on the resale market. This raises the question, how do these bots work? To shed light on the matter, we turn to one of the individuals behind the bots. Meet Nova, also known as Butterboy Nova on YouTube, where he has garnered nearly 200,000 subscribers by sharing his knowledge and teaching people about botting. Nova, a self-proclaimed sneakerhead, has been involved in botting for approximately four years. Motivated by witnessing other botters acquiring numerous sneakers, Nova wanted to level the playing field and learn how to secure a pair for himself. For security reasons, Nova prefers not to disclose his real name. He highlights that around 2016 and 2017, there was a negative perception associated with botting. Nova aimed to humanize the image of botters and demonstrate that they are ordinary individuals. It's important to note that Nova is not alone in his pursuits, and there are others engaged in similar activities. The presence of individuals like Nova provides insight into the world of botting and the motivations behind it. While Nike has taken steps to combat this issue, the battle against bots continues, impacting genuine consumers and shaping the dynamics of the sneaker market. Introduced in 2016, the Bots Act banned the resale of tickets obtained through bot technology. However, its effectiveness came into question after a Taylor Swift ticket incident in 2022, leading to criticism of the FTC for inadequate enforcement. To address broader issues, a new law called the Stopping Grinch Bots Act was introduced in 2021 by Paul Tonko. It grants the FTC the power to impose fines on those evading control systems on retail websites. The bill awaits a congressional vote, highlighting the importance of FTC enforcement. The sophistication of bots poses challenges in distinguishing between humans and machines, making law enforcement difficult. Retailers employ measures like capture and raffle systems, with Nike claiming a 98% success rate in combating bots during high-demand releases. However, the effectiveness of bots on the Nike sneaker app remains uncertain, and Nike has not provided updates on their raffle system. Botting accounts for a significant portion of entries, varying from 10 to 50% depending on demand. Creating barriers between buyers and sellers seems contradictory if the goal is to sell out. With sophisticated botters and exclusive sneakers on the rise, sneaker enthusiasts without bots may struggle to secure the latest releases. As long as botting is legal, it will persist, driven by the belief that if humans can succeed, so can bots. Profit opportunities remain as long as high-demand items like sneakers, consoles, and GPUs face scarcity. However, this approach dampens the enjoyment of passionate sneaker enthusiasts and erodes the fun of the community.
Ultimately, it's up to us as enthusiasts and consumers to advocate for a more inclusive and transparent sneaker market. Let's support retailers that prioritize fairness, encourage innovation in anti-bot measures, and celebrate the true spirit of sneaker fandom. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of how bots make it so difficult to buy Nike sneakers. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, happy hunting, and may your sneaker dreams come true.